Today we're in St. Peter's Railston where we've been taking out some infected joinery work. That's, um, it's had a lot of dry rot spores that have been uh, resting on it and continuing to grow. This woodwork right here is just outside of the bathroom on the aisle and it's pretty much what it is is it's floor joists with a, a bit of plyboard above which the um, flags have been sitting on. And this has had no ventilation at all pretty much because it's all been cemented in which has um, obviously resulted in a lot of dry rot forming and um, it's pretty much perfect conditions for it to sprout which, which is anywhere from 80 millimetres a day. This is one of the flags that we've taken up from the joist that we've just been demonstrating and even this has dry rot on it. Dry rot can take hold even on stonework and live for years without anyone noticing until it obviously grips hold of the wood. So the health issues surrounding dry rot is um, obviously it's, it's a fungus so it releases spores into the air which if inhaled can lead to pneumonia. To ensure dry rot is properly taken care of you, you need to ensure your rooms are well ventilated at all times as uh, dry rot often starts out as wet rot um, which obviously isn't wet enough for it to corrode due to wet rot but just dry enough for dry rot to appear. So we're standing on what used to be the bathroom and obviously it wasn't very well ventilated because the vents were actually plastered over and uh, we found a bit of plasterboard actually wedged into the vents by some previous contractors and uh, so basically we've just exposed that which will hopefully prevent any future dry rot taking place. There's going to be a meeting soon with the architects deciding what to do as if, uh, if we reinstate some wood there's no guarantee that dry rot just won't take hold again. So it, it could be anywhere from lime creating the floor to concrete in it. it. It just really depends on how well ventilated the room is.